Welcome back to our journey through the groundbreaking era of the Industrial Revolution, a period of profound change and innovation spanning from 1760 to 1860. In our series, we've been exploring the pivotal inventions that reshaped industries and laid the foundations for the modern world. Previously, we delved into the world of textile production with Samuel Crompton's mule spinning machine, unveiled in 1779. This remarkable invention, combining the spinning jenny and the water frame, revolutionized the way textiles were produced, setting a new benchmark for efficiency and productivity in the industry. Today, we turn our attention to another monumental advancement, this time in the field of iron production. The year is 1784, a period when the demand for iron was surging, yet its production remained hindered by outdated methods and materials. Amidst this backdrop, Henry Court emerged as a visionary, ready to transform the industry with his puddling process. Before Court's groundbreaking innovation, iron production was heavily reliant on charcoal, a resource that was becoming increasingly scarce and expensive. The quality of iron varied significantly, posing limitations for its use in machinery and large-scale constructions. In this episode, we will explore how Henry Court's ingenious method, utilizing coke rather than charcoal, revolutionized iron production. His puddling process didn't just improve the quality of iron, it streamlined the entire production process, marking a pivotal moment in the Industrial Revolution. Join us as we delve into the heart of the iron industry during the Industrial Revolution, uncovering the story of the puddling process and its indispensable role in shaping the industrial world. Henry Court was born in 1740 in Lancaster, England. Little is documented about his immediate family's background, including the wealth or status of his family. However, it's known that during the 18th century, Lancaster was a bustling port town, which might have influenced Court's early exposure to trade and industry. Details about Court's early life, including his education, are sparse. The educational opportunities in 18th century England varied significantly, often depending on family wealth and social status. There is no substantial evidence suggesting that Court received a formal higher education, which was not uncommon during this time, especially for those who would later become industrialists or entrepreneurs. Court's entry into the industrial world is better documented. Initially, he worked as a Navy agent, a role that would have provided him with insights into industrial supply chains and the importance of quality materials, particularly iron. This experience likely played a crucial role in his later interest in improving iron production methods. Henry Court's early years remained somewhat shrouded in the mists of history. However, his rise to prominence in the iron industry illustrates the trajectory of a man who, despite limited documentation about his early life and education, played a pivotal role in the Industrial Revolution. His innovations in iron production, most notably the puddling process, were critical in advancing industrial technology, even though he did not reap significant personal financial rewards from his contributions. The puddling process, invented by Henry Court in 1784, was a significant advancement in the production of high-quality iron during the Industrial Revolution. Here's a detailed description of how the process worked. The core of the puddling process was the puddling furnace, a type of reverberatory furnace. Unlike traditional blast furnaces, the puddling furnace separated the fuel, coal or coke, from the iron ore. This separation was crucial as it prevented the iron from being contaminated with impurities, especially sulfur and ash from the coal. Inside the furnace, pig iron, crude iron directly obtained from a blast furnace, was heated to a high temperature. The furnace was designed so that the flames and hot gases passed over the surface of the iron without direct contact with the fuel. Once the pig iron reached a molten state, the worker, known as a puddler, used a long rod to stir the molten iron in a process known as puddling. This manual stirring was crucial. It exposed different parts of the molten iron to air, oxygen, which helped in oxidizing and removing impurities like carbon, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. These impurities typically made pig iron brittle. Through the process of stirring and oxidizing, the molten mass began to take on a pasty consistency. This indicated the formation of wrought iron, which is much more malleable and ductile than pig iron. The puddler would continue to work this pasty mass, 
gathering it into a ball, known as a bloom, of wrought iron. Once a sizable bloom was formed, it was extracted from the furnace using tongs. This hot, malleable iron bloom was then transferred to a hammer or rolling mill where it was shaped into bars or other forms as required. The wrought iron produced through the puddling process was of significantly higher quality than pig iron. It was stronger, less brittle, and more malleable, making it more suitable for a wide range of uses, including the construction of machinery, ships, and building structures. Henry Court's life underwent significant changes following his invention of the puddling process in 1784, but, unfortunately, many of these changes were not for the better. After patenting the puddling process, Court initially experienced success. His invention was rapidly adopted across Britain, significantly improving the quality and quantity of wrought iron produced. This initially led to a rise in Court's reputation as an innovator in the iron industry. Despite the success of his invention, Court faced financial difficulties. He had entered into a partnership with Samuel Jellicoe, the son of the deputy paymaster of Siemens Wages, a relationship that was supposed to finance his experiments and establish his ironworks. However, after the death of Samuel's father, it was discovered that Jellicoe had been embezzling funds to support the business. Court's financial situation worsened due to legal and patent disputes. He struggled to protect his intellectual property rights, as the effectiveness of his methods led to widespread imitation. The legal battles over patents and the loss of his financial backing took a heavy toll on him. By 1789, Court's financial situation had deteriorated to the point of bankruptcy. His ironworks were taken over by his creditors, and he lost control of his patents. This period marked a significant downturn in his personal and professional life. In the years following his bankruptcy, Court lived a life of relative obscurity and financial hardship. Despite the widespread adoption of his methods, which greatly benefited the iron industry and the industrial revolution as a whole, Court received little financial benefit from his inventions. His friends helped to get him a £200 a year pension from the government in 1794 but he still died bankrupt. This pension was a modest attempt to alleviate his financial difficulties, though it was little compared to the impact of his inventions. Henry Court died in 1800, largely unrecognized and in modest circumstances. It was only posthumously that the full significance of his contributions to the iron industry was widely acknowledged. Today, he is remembered as a key figure in the Industrial Revolution, whose innovations in iron production had a lasting impact on industrial practices. Puddling process, a revolutionary method that significantly altered the course of the iron industry and became a defining moment in the Industrial Revolution. Yet, this breakthrough was accompanied by a set of challenges and limitations that underscored the intricate balance between innovation and its practical implications. Quartz method fundamentally transformed the production of iron by refining crude pig iron into a superior form of wrought iron thereby dramatically elevating the standard and utility of iron in various critical sectors, including the burgeoning railway industry, the robust construction sector, and the rapidly evolving realm of industrial machinery. Perhaps the most profound impact of Court's improved iron was seen in the railway industry, where the newfound strength and reliability of iron rails underpinned the rapid expansion of railway networks, a development that was not only emblematic of the Industrial Revolution but also a catalyst for unprecedented economic and societal transformation. The puddling process, by virtue of its enhancement of iron quality, indirectly stimulated a wave of innovations, particularly in metallurgy and mechanical engineering. This was evident in the emergence of steam-powered rolling and forging machines, which were developed to cope with the increased processing demands of wrought iron thus paving the way for further industrial advancements. Despite its revolutionary outcomes, Court's method was marred by its laborious nature, necessitating significant manual effort to stir the molten iron, a requirement that not only limited the scale of production but also imposed strenuous physical demands on the workforce. While the shift from charcoal to coke in the puddling furnaces represented an environmental advancement, it did not translate into fuel efficiency. The furnaces required substantial amounts of coal, leading to economic and environmental considerations that were initially overlooked. Although there was a marked improvement in the average quality of iron produced, 
The process was not without its inconsistencies, largely attributable to the reliance on the manual skills of the workers, which introduced variability in the end product. As the Industrial Revolution marched forward, the puddling process, innovative in its time, was gradually eclipsed by more advanced steel production methods, most notably the Bessemer process. These newer methods offered greater efficiency, scalability, and reduced reliance on manual labor, rendering quartz process obsolete. Henry Quartz's puddling process stands as a testament to the dynamic and often unpredictable nature of technological innovation during the Industrial Revolution. While it brought significant advancements and inspired further industrial progress, it also faced challenges and limitations that highlighted the complex interplay between invention, industry, and the evolving demands of an industrialized society. Despite these challenges, Quartz's contribution remains an integral and instructive chapter in the narrative of industrial advancement. As we close this chapter on Henry Quartz's monumental contribution to the Industrial Revolution with his puddling process, we are reminded of the relentless pace of innovation during this transformative era. Quartz's story, marked by both groundbreaking achievement and personal challenges, underscores the complex journey of industrial pioneers whose inventions reshaped the world. But our journey through the Industrial Revolution doesn't end here. In our next episode, we turn the pages to another significant invention that further revolutionized the fabric of industry, literally. We will explore the world of Edmund Cartwright and his power loom, an invention in 1785 that automated the weaving process, transforming the textile industry and paving the way for the modern era of mass production. The power loom not only automated weaving but also challenged the traditional methods of textile production, bringing a new wave of changes and challenges. Join us next time as we unravel the story of this remarkable machine and its impact on the Industrial Revolution. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through history. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating stories from the Industrial Revolution. Stay curious, and see you in the next episode, where we weave together the past and the present with Edmund Cartwright's Power Loom. <laughs>